Pitching prospects on the rise. Let's talk about them on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Saturday, June 1st. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White and 10 pitching prospects who've improved their stock the most this season. We'll start with... The first group of five, and that includes Gilbert Diaz of the D-backs, Logan Evans of the Mariners, George Clausen of the Phillies, Quinn Matthews of the Cardinals, and Zebby Matthews of the Twins. No relation. Scott, who are mm-hmm. a couple names that really stand out from this group? Yeah, the Matthews don't even spell their name the same way. One has one T, that's Quinn, and one has two Ts, that's Zebby. But I'm going to talk here about Gilbert Diaz of the Diamondbacks, who... Um, has had a great strikeout rate this year. Uh, got it, the, the ERA and WHIP aren't aren't as amazing because the first starts were kind of shaky. But in his last five, Yilbert Diaz a 184 ERA, a .72 WHIP, 12 K per nine, and he gets extra credit here because he's doing that at Double A Amarillo, which is by far the most hitter friendly venue in the already hitter friendly Texas league. It's not affecting Gilbert Diaz. He has triple-digit heat, locates it well up in the zone, a couple of hammer breaking balls. Looks like a big strikeout artist for the Diamondbacks. Logan Evans of the Mariners is one of the biggest risers just from last year's draft cl- class because he wasn't taken until round 12. Uh, the Mariners gave him an aggressive assignment to double A to begin this year. And all he's done is lead the level with a 123 ERA. And unlike most of the pitchers on this list, Logan Evans doesn't boast a big strikeout rate, which always it always means some skeptic some amount of skepticism for me. My favorite thing a pitcher can do is miss bats, but um he does get ground balls at a high at a very high rate, and he has developed a sweeper this year that could be a pitch that unlocks swing and miss potential. It's been a very effective pitch for him. I know evaluators have been raving about Logan Evans this year, so I wouldn't let the so-so strikeout rate scare you away from him. He he does seem to be a riser, like I said, leading all of double A in ERA. This next group of pitching prospects on the rise includes Kate Povich from the Orioles, Winston Santos from the Rangers, Spencer Schwellenbach, who just got called up by the Atlanta Braves, Jonah Tong of the Mets, and Matt Wilkinson of the Guardians, also known as Tugboat. Yeah. How could you not root for Tugboat? Come on, Scott. How could you not root for Tugboat? I'll get into Tugboat in a second, but let's talk here first about Jonah Tong of the Mets, who... I wasn't familiar with him coming into the year. You look at his numbers uh, in his, you look at his numbers as a pro last year, the walk rate was very high. It prevented him from having any sort of impact. Statistically, the numbers just looked awful across the board, but he's, he's improved the control dramatically this year in low a, there was a little bit of a step back once he moved to up to high a, but last couple turns he's, he's gotten, the, the, the strike throwing in order again. And Jonah Tong has been a huge bat misser for the Mets in the low minors this year. And it's in a way that um, the, by traditional evaluation standards may have slipped through the cracks because he doesn't throw especially hard. His fastball sits in the low 90s, does Jonah Tong's. So he can get it up in the mid 90s, but mostly in the low 90s. It's just the, the shape of the fastball, uh, the way he gets the way he creates that rising effect and, and gets whiffs up in the zone. And that's despite a really over-the-top delivery for for Jonah Tong because, you know, a lot of times with that, you get that optimal vertical approach angle from a lower release point. That's the easier way to get it. But Tong is get is is able to register whiffs with the rising effect uh, in spite of that. And it's kind of reminiscent to me of Joe Ryan, who was dominant throughout his minor league career and never got a lot of pro, uh, never got a lot of credit from prospect evaluation evaluators I think just because back then they hadn't come around to this fastball shape as much but uh 
Jonah Tong, if anything, his his secondary arsenal is even more developed than Joan Ryan's ever was. Has a long way to go. Like I said, he's still an A-ball, but he can move quickly for the Mets and I think is a very exciting pickup in Dynasty Leagues where he's still available. And then finally, there's Matt Wilkinson, who, tugboat, as you said. Um, he, everything I just said about Jonah Tong and fastball shape and the 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 vertical approach angle and all of that it goes double for Wilkinson because he throws like 90 miles per hour he it, it's it's not even like below it's just like bad velocity by modern standards left-hander but he has a very low release point and also a long wingspan from what I've, what I've read even though he's 6 foot 1 I think the wingspan is like 6 foot 6 for, for Matt Wilkinson. So between the extra reach and the low low angle of the release, it puts the fastball on a plane that hitters just, they can't square it up. He had a 15 strikeout game wow. in, uh, in the minors already this year. Uh, has a 19% swinging strike rate, a 69% strike rate. So like he's, he's a really good control pitcher as well. And it's, it's kind of a gimmick. But it's a gimmick that we've seen work before. Uh, he'll kind of have to prove himself at every level and has a long way to go still. But Matt, but Matt Wilkinson, the kind of numbers he's putting up, very interesting. Just an incredible strikeout-to-walk ratio. And, uh, yeah, be, it'd be fun to see a guy named Tugboat <laughs> become a thing in the majors. We're kind of seeing that exact thing from Shota Imanaga right now, the way that he throws – low 90s velocity, the rising fastball from the left-hand side. It's, yeah, and I'd, I'd love to see it. Let's, uh, <laughs> we're all rooting for Tugboat. Uh, if you want to read more about the rest of the name, Scott has an article, which is live on the site. You can check it out, cbssports.com slash fantasy slash baseball. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, you can listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again next week. Bye-bye. 